first the fire, beloved, and then the glory. It's not the glory and then the fire. No, the proper order is the fire and then the glory. So in Matthew 3, 11 through 12, it says, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist is speaking of Jesus Christ. He will baptize you. He will saturate you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So let's don't separate because the Word of God doesn't separate the two. The Holy Spirit comes into you and along with the Holy Spirit, there's fire. So what does fire do? Fire purifies. Fire burns. It burns up sin. It burns up patterns of thinking that are twisted. It burns up your um, spirit of error that wants to move you away from Christ. And we need to embrace the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, with that desire to want to be purified so that our hearts can be pure. The Lord will give us a new heart. Jesus said, the pure in heart shall see God. To be able to see God is to be able to, to know what he's up to, is to be able to see what he's doing in his light. We then have light because our eye is not evil. It's not full of impurities. We're, we're able to have the mind of Christ. That is so powerful and that is what the world needs. When you come to Christ, Holy Spirit comes in you with the purpose of setting you apart. There shall be no more mixture between you and the world. If you have the love of the world in your life, then you don't have the love of God there. Being saturated with the love of God is going to take you out of the things of the world that the world loves. So the Lord is saying, I want my people to make a covenant with me that we are in partnership with one another and that I through my spirit sends my people to the world to be a burning light to show the world what it is to know me to be a purifying agent for people that are seeking me so we read again he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor gathering his wheat into the barns and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So that right there shows you that when you come into knowing the Lord, it's not about you just saying a little pretty prayer. Oh, Lord, come into my heart. Amen. And now I'm good to go. And I'm stamped with a stamp that says I'm going to heaven. No, that, that's a perversion of the gospel. The true gospel is when a person by his choice receives the Lord, surrenders his will to the Lord. And you want now to be made holy by the Holy Spirit. That's what Holy Spirit does. He makes you holy. And the Lord says he's going to take his threshing uh, fork and he's going to, off the threshing floor, he's going to winnow the chaff. He's going to bounce it up in the air, separate it from you, separate sin destructive habits, destructive thinking, pathways that move you into sin, all of that. His desire is to separate you from that. Now, if he put the fire on you and you were together with all that, then you would be burned up too. And the Lord's not going to do that. There has to be first a what? Separation from you of those things that are lesser those things that are base in your life, the low life, they must be separated. And he does that work. The Holy Spirit does that work. And sometimes, many times, it's very wrenching to have these things separated out of your life removed. Once they're removed, the fire of God comes to literally destroy it. The divine math of God is first subtraction and then addition. Then he's going to come and add the blessings of the Lord upon your life. So all of us right now should be crying out for the fire of God. Crying out. Don't you say you're the fire. You're not the fire. 
the Holy Ghost is the fire. Let his fire come and consume you. And when you're allowing the fire of God to consume sin in your life, you're allowing the work of the Holy Spirit to separate you out, to remove things from your life, the Lord is your great I am. And you are blessed beyond measure.